What's going on, Nerd Army guys? Welcome to the newest episode of Exploring Comics. Today we are going to be exploring the comic book history for Jean Grey, also known as the Phoenix. So let's get right into this amazing Omega-level mutant and discuss her history. So here we go. Jean Grey would first arrive at the Xavier Institute as a student. She was a woman among a mostly male school, so needless to say, the beautiful redhead had the attention of most of the males in the school, especially one, Scott Summers, aka Cyclops. She would meet with Xavier and ask him how he was able to convince her parents to allow her to go to a boarding school so far away. He would reveal that he had actually sensed her mutant ability and her extreme power, he wanted her to attend his school to join an elite group of students known as the X-Men. She would later meet her fellow team members, the X-Men, and they all had their own individual code names, so Xavier gave her hers as well. Her code name was Marvel Girl. Then he set aside and told them what their real purpose was for him bringing this team together. They were meant to help achieve a coexistence with the human race, so that way everyone can live in peace and stand in front of those who tried to stop that dream. The first mission as a team and where they first all donned their uniforms is when we actually get to see them go to stop Magneto who has hijacked a missile and is trying to use it to blow up an army base. Jean is actually there just in time and deflects the missile using her telekinetic power. Later on down the line, Jean is actually developing feelings for Scott Summers and the two would eventually become a couple. Eventually, Jean would see her powers grow and besides being a powerful telekinetic user, she would actually become an incredibly powerful telepath starting to hear and sense everyone's feelings, thoughts, and everything, pretty much overloading her young mind. In Uncanny X-Men number 100, the X-Men are actually trapped on a space station that's about to be bombarded by a solar flare. But Jean would not let her friends take that risk. She decided that she would pilot the ship and allow her friends to stay safe in the stasis pod. She decided she was going to pilot the ship that had an exposed cockpit just so that way her friends would be safe and get them out of this dangerous situation. With the exposed cockpit, it actually left her vulnerable to a lot of different radiation bombarding her body. As she went into the cockpit, Cyclops screamed in agony, no Jean, don't do this. But she had to save her teammates. She had to save Scott. But amazingly, Jean would survive and she would emerge in a completely new costume and completely different personality. She would be the same gene but ultimately would be another person in her body this person went by the phoenix she had all of Jean's memories and would actually describe herself as life and fire incarnate right before she blacked out when she awoke the new identity had completely taken over known as the dark phoenix she actually would want to just sever every single tie Jean had to other parts of her old life the Dark Phoenix would not be controlled or contained and eventually would blast into space. Later on, her and Colossus would actually be having a pretty heavy duty fight and she would get nailed by Colossus, one really good hit that knocked Jean's consciousness back into control over Dark Phoenix. She would tell Scott the only way to ensure his safety and the safety and lives of the rest of the team and the world is for her to sacrifice herself destroying the Dark Phoenix. She would use a leftover Kree weapon on herself, completely deatomizing her and erasing her from existence. This ultimately would destroy Scott, causing him to leave the X-Men and leave the team. Madeline Pryor was introduced and she was an exact copy clone of Jean Grey. She even had Jean Grey's memories and all her feelings about Scott and everything else in the world. Her and Scott would get together and eventually have a child, which would go on to become the mutant Cable. We would see Jean's return in the X Factor series, where it was revealed that when the Phoenix took over, she placed Jean's consciousness and body in a stasis pod at the bottom of Jamaica Bay. So Jean's alive? Jean would go through a lot of turmoil in this series, including one of the things she had to deal with was Scott and Madeline Pryor having a child together. This series would cause Jean to change pretty drastically. She and Cyclops would eventually get married and she would become the headmistress at the Xavier School. Jean's amazing life would hit a big bump at this point. She would actually divorce Scott after he had a psychic affair with Emma Frost. Damn, that's cold. Soon after this, Jean would meet the bitter end yet again when Wolverine and herself were placed by Magneto slash Zorn on a meteor hurling towards the Earth with no chance of survival. The heat and the low oxygen level 
they would start to die. Gene would start to die. Wolverine's healing factor would keep him alive. So Wolverine did what he thought was right, and he stabbed her right through the chest, putting her out of her misery and not making her go through such a horrible death. But just then, the Phoenix Force shows up, saving Jean, healing her body, and saving Wolverine. So she died again, and came back. Again. But that was not the end of the story. Zorn would show up again, and give Jean the largest, most intense stroke ever recorded. And she would die right there in Cyclops' arms. Her final words to Cyclops were, All I ever do is die on you. Wolverine would get his revenge on Zorn for killing Jean and would decapitate him. So as you see, she dies, she comes back, starts all over again, just like a phoenix. But let's talk about her power specifically. Jean Grey is an Omega level mutant. She has strong telekinetic and telepathic powers. But when she taps into the Phoenix Force, she has immense cosmic powers, such as cosmic fire generation, space and time control, the ability to warp reality itself, and life force control. So guys, what'd you guys think of the history of Jean Grey? As you can see, she's died, she's come back, she's died, she's come back, she's died, she's come back. Too many times to count, it's actually become kind of a running joke within Marvel. The character herself in comic lines has actually made jokes about it herself. If I come back one more time, it's going to be ironic. But guys, Jean Grey is an amazing character, and I love doing this history of, so let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comments down below, guys. Make sure you guys hit that like thumbs up button on this video, and make sure you guys tune in next time, because next week we will be doing the history of the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn. So guys, let me know what you guys thought about that one. Are you excited for the history of the Green Goblin? Let me know down in the comments down below, guys. And make sure if you have any suggestions, put them down there as well. I'll get to them as soon as I can. But thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time right here on Nerds Rise. Peace out.